Well, hello, friends, and welcome to At the Cross Community and also Jim's in Town Gardening and Bella's Legacy Rabbitry. I want to welcome you here on October 18th. I had to step up a day. It is nighttime on the 17th. Um, and the reason this is being recorded is both Leanne and I have doctor appointments. We're going to be leaving about quarter after six. Um, tomorrow morning for me, but this morning for you. So let's go to scripture. And I hope each one of you get something out of this. This is something that is weighed heavy on my heart for some time now. Uh, let's see. Scriptures. Here we go. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. But exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Verse 15. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the pro provocation, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to, provo to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more the more, as you see the day approaching. Friends, you know, we're entering into fall. Many of you that are hearing my voice, you have shared that you're even feeling cooler. Um, Sister Sylvia, tonight in uh, Brother Donnie's study, she was cooler than our, than we are. I mean, we're 53 right now. I think we're supposed to be somewhere around 51 tonight with rain. She was cooler than us. And oh, then we have winter. You know, I've shared many times, it is nothing for us to dip down below zero degrees. We can get 24, 25. I've seen 42 before, below zero. Now, friends, like I said, I've got something very heavy on my heart. And this is what it is. I have been getting a lot of suggested videos when I bring up YouTube. And in these videos, it shows a rather sober scene. And it's hard to miss. And that's the homeless. You know, in these videos, it shows a lot of the major cities all over the United States. And it's in almost every major city. But these videos that I've been watching have been really focusing on Pennsylvania, California. It shows homeless. Homeless lying beside almost every road, lying in the middle of an active parking lot, lying against glass windows with people eating on the other side of those glass windows. You know, according to the authorities, the reasons for those being in this condition, homeless, oftentimes is drug use, addiction, a lot of mental illness, the high cost of housing. And then you have some of these young people who just choose to live that way. It's a lifestyle for them. Essentially, they're forsaking and being free. Free from the responsibilities 
of life. You know, one thought comes to mind when observing human beings that are reduced to this awful, horrific condition is the phrase. But for the grace of God, there go I. You see, regardless of the immediate reasons, according to the authorities, I think we have to wonder, where did these lives go wrong? I mean, nobody wants to live like this. What happened with these people? Especially this younger generation who, this is what they want to do. What went wrong? What happened? You know, I believe that one common component in many of these cases is lack of oversight. A lack of encouragement that they needed. Lack of encouragement that they didn't receive in their past. Now, I realize to some this may seem simplistic, but you know, encouragement from our parents, family, friends, church, people who we might work with, you know, these are some powerful antidotes, and especially to a hard heart. You know, for me, I've been blessed all through my life. I've had many encouragers. I've had many people pray for me. You know what? Including some of you that are hearing this, this message. Now, does that mean it's always been peaches and cream? No, there's been hard times in my life. There's been times that I didn't know where the next meal would come from. But the thing is, I've got Christ in my life. And I know that the Lord has always provided for me, even during those hard times. And you see, friends, I want to be just like what we read in, in the book of Acts, Barnabas. I want to be an encourager to all that are around me. So today, I want us to consider the phrase, hardened by sin's deceitfulness. That's what we just read in, in, in that verse in Hebrews. And if you look at the word hardened, and I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing some of these words, I know I am, but it translates into the Greek word skleruno, S-K-L-E-R-U-N-O. And when you look at this word sclerino, <laughs> it's the same word that we get for sclerosis in the English. So that brings me to something else. You see, you might be most familiar with this word in the description of a disease called arterio. Yep, yep. But what that means is hardening and thickening of the arteries. Now, if you're over 40 years old, you have probably, when you've seen a doctor, they've probably done lab work and they've checked your cholesterol. And it's one of the reasons that I have to go to the appointment um, today, tomorrow. Tomorrow for me, today for you. It's what I have to do every six months. You see, high cholesterol, it contributes to the buildup of gunk in our blood vessels. And that's not good. You got your... Uh, High cholesterol counts and you're low and blah, 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 blah. And then there's, uh, what is it, triglycerides and all those medical names. You see, this is a health issue that I, that I deal with. And though it's decreased, I still have to work on it. But one of the main things why they want to check is because of the, uh, the medicine that I'm taking just to make sure it's not damaging the liver or kidneys or anything. But you see, I have to take responsibility of the foods I eat, 
things that I like that contribute to this issue. And even though I've eaten how I should, um, you know, Leanna, there was a time, Leanna, every single breakfast, I don't know how long it was. It was probably a good year, year and a half. Oatmeal every single morning. You know how boring that is? But, you know, nothing really changed until I started eating rabbit meat. There was a time we were eating rabbit meat about every other week. We haven't lately. I haven't. Anyway, so that's, that's a different story. But, you know, taking care of our physical health is important. And on your own, I'd ask you to please read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. You see, it's even more important to take care of our spiritual health and when we look at the scriptures the verses that i, I shared in in those two two places you see this warning is needed today just as much today as it was written when it was written Friends, every single one of us knows people whose hearts have become hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Each one of us knows. So today, I want you to, I, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in your walk with Christ. Because I think all of us have probably heard sermon messages, you've probably read in Scripture, where there's a danger of a hardened heart. According to scripture, one of the things that's needed for different ones is encouragement. Encouragement is such a powerful remedy to a hard heart. Now, of course, you're going to have ones that are not going to listen. I don't want to hear about I don't want to hear about that stuff. I don't want to hear about Jesus. You're going to get that. I get that. But, you know, we can still encourage one another daily. As long as it's called today, we can still encourage. The scripture says, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, something else I'd really encourage, like to encourage you, is to consider who needs encouragement today. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's somebody right in your home. Maybe it's somebody that you work with or go to school with. It might be somebody that you meet in the grocery store tomorrow, today. You know, perhaps the Spirit will bring somebody to your mind, one who needs to be encouraged because they're so discouraged. There might be a matter that's going on in their life. It might be the Lord urging you to encourage that one. It might be one who is struggling in their walk with God. It might be a born-again believer. And their heart might be coming start starting to get hardened they've gone off that path that the lord's chosen for them. you know what if you pray i believe the lord will lead you to somebody who needs to be encouraged needs to hear encouraging words maybe even a hug I know it seems from, from reading the text, the act of encouragement is beneficial both to the one who's doing the encouraging as well as the one that needs to be encouraged. So friends, let us be vigilant in this fight against hard-heartedness. This hard-hardness caused by the cholesterol of sin. Let us make it our goal to encourage 
one another today. It's something that I've been sharing a long time now. Whether it's in the devotions, whether it's in the sermon messages that I, de that I deliver, pray for one another daily, encourage one another daily. It's what we're called to do. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and Father, we want our hearts to remain soft, soft and pliable so that we don't lose our spiritual sensitivity. See, we want to yield to the Holy Spirit. We need to remember that those who once had a soft, pliable heart, there's so many that have become hardened over time. No longer do they sense your presence in their life. Oftentimes their spiritual ver uh, vision is darkened. So Lord, I, I pray that you help us. Help us once, a day, once again on this day to taste and see that you are good. You are the bread of life. You satisfy our hunger, Lord. So I ask that you quench our thirst as we dip from your spring of living water. Lord, it bothers me seeing so many in the streets that they have no purpose. I see what some of the drugs are doing to these. They stand there and they'll bend down at the waist. And I mean, they just stand there. No purpose. You look at their facial expressions and it's blank. Lord, I don't understand what, what happened how people could not even want a friend. Lord, let us be encouragers. Let us reach those that are unlovable. Those that don't seem to have, not have a purpose. Let them help us to let them know that there is somebody who loves them, who will call them a friend, a friend that will never leave them. Father, I pray that you put that in each one of our spirits. And Lord, I also want to lift up the weak family. Sister Mary Catherine had texted me this not that long ago. The leaks reached a dead end. Denied angiogram because she is under 16 years old. Hannah reached the breaking point. She overheard and was devastated. Family is stressed. They have an appointment with the surgeon to see what the next steps are. Lord, I pray that you be with this family. Lord, this closed doors, but Father, we know that you can open up other doors. You're the God of miracles. Lord, you could touch her and heal her <coughs> and make her whole just like that. And I do believe that you're still in the miracle working business today. <coughs> <coughs> That you are the still, you're the great physician. You still are that mighty healer. So, Lord, we thank you. You know what needs to be done. You know your will. Lord, we also lift up all those. Uh, Sister Michelle with the monster. and uh, I can't remember the name. Brother Donnie had brought up somebody else that's dealing with monster. 
Lord, we pray that you touch all those that are dealing with this. Lord, we praise you that even though Leanna was exposed, she doesn't have symptoms. She didn't pass symptoms on to me. So we praise you for that, that we can still go and have the appointments that we needed. Lord, for ones that we had been around since that Wednesday, but they don't seem to be bothered by this either. So Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. Father, we lift up all those that we've been praying for, for salvation. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will work in ones around them to sow good word, your good word, but also to live by what we've read, what we've learned, that they might see that there's something different in us. We thank you. We praise you. Father, I thank you for the safe trip to Bangor, safe trip back. Good report on the doctor's appointment that I have. And Lord, I praise you that with um, the procedure that Leanna's having done, that she won't have pain. She'll be able to overcome the things that are happening. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is so different doing it uh, recorded. I'm not used to this. Um, and hopefully this is the last one that I'll have to do for a long while. My doctor appointments are usually early in the morning. They know that I like to get there, get it done, come home so I can still do things. So that's why they do that in the morning. But I want to thank every one of you. Now, remember... Share the videos that are on At The Cross with family, friends, your social platforms. You know, Brother Donnie's with uh, the intro on, on the Bible thing. I, I think this is going to be a really good study, and I think it's going to help <clears throat> a lot of people that have had questions. But share these messages, some of the sermon messages. Share them with your friends, family members. Not for our glory, but for God's glory. Let's get the word out there. So many people aren't hearing the truth. And I know that the Lord's using me in a different way. I mean, my messages have gotten quite a bit bolder. And I'm teaching on some things that a lot of people are dealing with. But you see, I can teach these. Because much of these things is what the what the Lord has taken from me. Things that I've overcome. So friends, I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Love you all. God bless you. I still have to find the outro. It's here. There it is. Mm -hmm.